Hi, I'm Noel from creationeffects.com, and in this video I'm going to be showing you a new tool for creating cool 3D particle trails in After Effects. I call it Wisp, and it started out as these twisty smoke effect things I was playing with, uh, so I called them Wisps. But then it became a whole lot more than that, and uh, the name just kind of stuck. Anyway, I'm super excited about this effect. Um, this, this is one of the good ones. And even if it were one of the bad ones, I'd still say it was one of the good ones. But this time, I clearly mean it, uh, because it's just fun to play with and it looks really cool. And there are 50 presets included, so you can make a lot of stuff with this, like fire or smoke trails, uh, for making things like meteors or missiles or plane contrails. And you can do ink bleeds and make the ink follow a path. You can make growing vines, uh, you can make trails of sand or ice or liquid, fairy dust, glitter, lightning, and a whole bunch of other abstract shapes. These are designed to follow any 3D layer that you tell them to follow, or if you just have them stay in one place, you can make all sorts of interesting floating orbs. This is really a great option for motion graphics artists who don't want to shell out hundreds of dollars for an expensive plugin. This lets you do everything inside of After Effects, and best of all, everything is customizable with easy to use controls as always. So let's get on with the show. I'm going to start with a basic overview of what a WISP is and how it works, and then I'll go over all of the customization controls, and then I'll make an example animation which shows you how to animate a WISP to move around a 3D object, and then I'll end by showing you a useful trick for slowing down the WISPs. First I want to show you how to correctly open the zip file that you downloaded. Uh, there is a, a right way and a wrong way to do it, and if you do it the wrong way, you might get some errors in After Effects. So if you're on a Windows machine, be sure to right-click it and look for an option that says Extract or Extract All, and open it that way. And if you're on a Mac, you can just double-click it to open it. And then open the folder, and uh, you should see this Wisp Cheat Sheet PDF in there. If you're looking to do something specific with your Wisp and you're not sure how, uh, this has a lot of helpful instructions and tips in here that you can you can just kind of skim through it to see what I have, um, or you could do a, a search uh, control or command F uh, if you've, you want to look for a certain keyword. And then at the bottom I have some troubleshooting tips uh, if you get an error message. And then there are two versions of the WISP template here. Uh, if you're in an older version of After Effects, go with CS6. Otherwise use this Creative Cloud 2019 version. The effects are identical in both of these. Um, this one is just optimized for the latest version of After Effects. So you can open that up. Another way to access the effects, if you're already working in a project and you want to import the wisps into that project, you can just go to File and Import and File. And uh, just select the project file and then open it. And it'll put it all inside one folder in your project panel. Okay, so uh, you can see we've got some instructions here to help you get started. And then in here we have two WISPs comps. These have the 50 presets inside them, and uh, there's a 4K in HD. Obviously the 4K is slower, so let's look at the HD one. And the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your resolution is set to half or less. Uh, you don't want this to be any higher than it needs to be, just to keep it running fast. And uh, if I scroll down, you can see we have over 50 layers, so these are the different presets. Each layer is a different wisp, and you can just uh, unhide a layer and then play it back to see what it looks like. So they're all different, um, and you'll notice that they all follow this loop path, and that's because they're all following one layer, this target layer up top, which if I unhide, you can see I've created this motion path for it. And if I deselect it, you can see it just looks like a little target here, and you can scale that up if you want to, if that makes it easier to work with. But you can just animate this to go wherever you want in three dimensions. And let me hit the P key to show you the position property. You can see I've got four keyframes in here to make it do this little motion. And actually, uh, this layer can be anything you want. If You can make these wisps follow whatever layer you want, um, just as long as it's 3D. So you have to enable this 3D layer switch right here, and the wisp will follow it. 
and I'll show you how to set that up in a moment. But uh, first, let me change the camera view to uh, from the right side, just to show you. Uh, and I, if I scrub through this, you can see not only is that target going in a loop, but it's going forward as well. So you can see that it's moving in three dimensions. And if I add a new camera layer, layer, new camera, and I can hit my C key to bring up my camera tools. And uh, let's try a different wisp, something where it'll be easy to see. Okay, so I've got this, I called it rainbow worm, I don't know what that is. Um, but now that we have a camera layer, I can use my camera tool and just click and drag on the scene. And hopefully you can kind of see I'm moving my camera around it. And so this works like a 3D object, uh, even though it's on a 2D layer. That's cool because it means you can animate your camera to move through particles as they're falling or to move your camera around it and uh, just create some really cool animations. I'll delete my camera layer and let's talk about customization. I'll hide my rainbow worm and then unhide another one of these. This is a, a dragon tail. I, I didn't know what to call it. Anyway, we'll use this. Um, so I'll select that. And then if I go to my effect controls panel, uh, if you don't see this panel, you can just go to window and then effect controls. And there you'll see a bunch of these controls which you can use to customize the look and behavior of the wisp. And uh, underneath those, you've got this little effects divider here. And everything under, under that is the effects, which I added to this layer to create this wisp. So basically all of these controls just control certain properties of these effects down here. And I'm just going to go through all of these really quick. Uh, I think it's really important that you understand how these work, um, just because it's not always going to be as simple as just making it follow a certain target layer and then you're done. You might have to play with a, a little bit to get the look that you want. So you should know how it works. And you should also pay attention to the comments here that I've made. You can just widen that column and then um, expand a layer and you can read. Usually there's more than this, but there's usually a few paragraphs of comments and instructions that you can use to just to see how that wisp works and what's different about it. So something to keep in mind. Oh, and also before I get into customization, I should tell you about the difference between these solid layers here and these pre-comp layers. You can see that's got a different icon there. So the solid layers, uh, you can customize directly on the layer with these controls. And these pre-comp layers, if you double click them, you can open up another comp. And in there, you can see a number of just solid layer wisps uh, added together, which uh, combine to make a more detailed, usually a better looking wisp. So these pre-comp ones might preview a little slower than these solid layer ones. And then also in the project panel, all of these pre-comps can be found in these folders here. Okay, uh, select drag and tail. I'll go up here into the general controls. And the first control that we have is target layer. I've already discussed this a little bit. This is how you set a wisp to follow a certain layer. Right now you can see it's set to target one, which is that first shape layer that we have. Um, and like I said, you can set that to follow any layer. So like if you had a fairy that you had already made going across your screen, um, you could bring that fairy into this comp or copy these layers into your fairy comp. And then with each of these solid layer wisps here, you would just set it to follow that fairy layer. And also remember that your, your target layer has to have 3D enabled for it. Oh, and another thing that's important to remember, um, when you copy a layer, so let's do that right now. If I select this layer and the target layer, and I'm going to copy them and put them into a new comp. So I'll go to Composition, New Composition. Uh, let's make it HD. And I'll just paste them, Control or Command V, and you can see it's all screwed up. And that's because we still haven't told this Wisp layer which target layer to follow. That information doesn't copy over. 
So just set the target layer like I showed you, and that should get rid of the errors and everything should work properly. Um, unless you're in CS6. If you're using CS6, there is one extra step you got to do. Um, after you set the target layer, you'll have to turn on a few expressions because they don't turn on by themselves like they do in later versions of After Effects. So select the layer and right click it and look for the Reveal Expression Errors option. Click on that and uh, that will open up um, I think three expressions that have an error icon next to them. And so to turn them back on, you just click on the little equal sign icon and then you should be good to go. So next we have this Reduce Flicker CC Wide Time Control. The CC Wide Time effect is down here and basically it's, it's like motion blur. Um, it just blurs the motion by blending different frames together. And the reason that's necessary uh, is because I'm using this CC Particle World effect to generate the particles here. Um, many of you are familiar with that effect. It's really cool. It, it, it works with your 3D cameras, um, but it has this glitch where particles might flicker. And I think it's because they're kind of fighting over which one gets to be in front of, e of the other. And I can show you what that looks like. I'll just hide the CC wide time effect. And you can see in here particles getting lighter and darker and flickering. So this effect takes care of that. It makes it much smoother. And actually, if I hide these other effects, you can see without CC wide time and with CC wide time, it affects the transparency of the wisp as well. And what I do to fix that usually is I have these levels effects on there. And if I open that up, you can see it's set to alpha and this right arrow is moved way down to the left side and you can see that just makes it much more visible. Okay, next we have random seed. Most of you are familiar with that one. Just change this to any value and all of the random properties of that wisp will change. So this layer uses a lot of wiggle expressions and um, there are controls in here which I'll get to which you can add a lot of random variation um, if you don't like how something looks, just try a different value in the random seed and everything will change. And then I've got this little note here that says also change random seed in CC particle world effect. So there is um, a random seed property inside this effect. If you open that up and then open up extras, the very last control is random seed. There's no stopwatch icon. I can't, there's no way for me to link that property to this control. So you got to do it separately. Um, you can change this and if you want, you can change this too. And that actually randomizes the output of the particles. So um, it, it can affect the position of the particles and the timing of when they're emitted. Okay, next uh, we have this section of controls called particle controls. And I divided those up into three different sections. Um, and these are a lot more straightforward. So we'll just go through them really quick. <clears throat> birth rate, this affects the wisp density. Higher value will give you more particles. Maximum opacity, uh, just how transparent you want them to be. Birth color and death color. All particles have a lifespan, and uh, so the birth color would be the, the color of that particle when it's born, when, it, when it's emitted. And the death color would be the, the color of the particle when it dies. Similar concept here, we've got birth size and death size. and um, Something that isn't in here, but it is a very important property, uh, is inside the CC particle world effect. I'll open, or uh, it's up here at the top, longevity. So that is the lifespan of the particles. Um, so you, you'll have to remember this one. Again, there was no stopwatch icon um, for this property, so I wasn't able to create a control for it up here. Uh, but you can just open this up and set it to whatever you want. This value is in seconds. So in 10 seconds, these particles that are emitted will fade away. And uh, you can actually also, if I open up particle and open up opacity map, you've got this curve here which determines how these particles first appear and then how they die off. So if you imagine this as like a timeline of 10 seconds, because that's what we have longevity set to. 
it's going to go from 0% opacity to 100% opacity really quick, and then it's going to slowly fade off. If you want to change this, it's really easy. Uh, just make sure you've got this selection tool selected, and then you can draw a new curve to make it the particles fade out more quickly or whatever you want to do. Size variation, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Volume shade, um, if I turn that down to zero, you can see it just looks more flat now. So this one adds highlights and shadows to make it look like it has, it has volume. Um, producer radius, if you want, right now the particles are all being emitted from a single point, um, but you can enlarge that if you want in three dimensions. And then uh, at the bottom of these particle appearance controls, we've got this particle appearance variation, which you can open up and you've unlocked this whole world of controls here, which you can use to add variation to these properties up here. So uh, if you're an After Effects user, you're probably familiar with the wiggle expression, and that's really all these are. Um, you have a wiggle amount and a wiggle speed for each property. So one that you might use a lot would be for the birth color. So you've got a birth color wiggle amount, uh, which you can set to like, we'll say 20, and you'll have to enter a speed too. So this speed is times per second. So if I say five, then five times per second, the birth color is going to fluctuate by an amount of 20. And let's crank that up a little bit. Oh, you know what? Uh, we have this colorama effect on here. The colorama effect just applies whole new colors over the whole thing. That's why we weren't seeing it. That's why it's important to read these comments because it, it tells you things like that that are different about that wisp um, so you don't just sit there scratching your head. Um, most of these properties have their own wiggle amount and wiggle speed so you can add variation and uh, just it just makes it look a lot more interesting. So I definitely encourage you to play with those a little bit. Uh, next we have particle physics controls. So um, velocity and resistance, these two are linked with the width of the wisp. Velocity refers to how much force these particles have initially. So as they explode outward, how much force is given to them. And then resistance is the force that slows them down after that initial explosion. So if you turn this up, let's see what that does to it. You can see the particles have like exploded outward much further and faster. Um, but you can increase the resistance and it puts them back. So these work together and uh, you can look at the cheat sheet that I provided. It gives you some, some tips on how to use them because they're not exactly the same. Uh, inherit velocity, this one uh, right now it's set to a negative number which actually shoots particles backward along the trail. You can kind of see that if I play it, maybe not. But if I use a positive number, like 100, the particles, as they're being emitted, are going to be moving along with that target layer. And it's kind of subtle, but it really is a nice effect. Gravity, uh, you can make the particles fall down or rise upward. Um, if you want them to rise upward, you got to use a negative value. See, here's a, an example of when you might not want the CC wide time effect because it, it creates that blurred motion. And I should mention that there's also ways to make the particles move sideways or diagonal. You don't have to just go up or down. You can open up the CC particle world effect and in physics we have um, gravity vector. So you can play with that and that changes the direction. And then Again, just like we had up here, we've got particle physics variation. Uh, so you can just add wiggle amounts and speeds to any of these properties. So last, we have these warp controls, um, which affect the turbulent displace effect down here. Um, you'll find this on every wisp. So at its most basic level, a wisp is going to have these three effects. Particle world, CC wide time to eliminate flickering, and then warp or turbulent displace. The warp is what makes it kind of shift and distort and it makes it much more organic and alive and it just more interesting. And so you can control those properties 
of the warp with these controls. You've got an amount and then a size, which affects you know the detail of the distortion and complexity also, you can add more detail. And then evolution speed, if you want it to keep morphing and warping, you can just add a speed here. If you wanted your wisp to just stay completely still, you would just set that to zero. And then uh, this last section here, warp position, um, let me read this little note here. The position of the warp should follow the position of the particles in your frame. Either use the travel speed control, that's this one, uh, or keyframe the manual offset control to make the movement match. Here's the manual offset. Uh, this one requires some explanation. Um, you can see if I increase the warp amount, you can kind of see how that affects the, uh, the wisp. If you were looking at this with a camera and you animate the camera to move to the right, all these particles would be moving to the left. And the warp or the turbulence is not going to move with them. So it's going to look like ripples of distortion going over this wisp. And it's not it's probably not going to be the look you're, you want. So what you can do is animate the warp to move with the particles. And you can do that by setting a travel speed here. You can figure out how many pixels per second um, these particles are moving in your frame. And then you enter that amount here. And uh, you can also set the direction. And the warp will just continually move in that direction at that pace that you specify. So that uh, will also apply with falling particles. If you have gravity set and like you have sparks and the sparks are falling, um, you'll want to point this downward and figure out how fast those particles are falling and then set that warp travel speed to reflect that. And then the warp will just follow those particles and you won't notice any waves of distortion going, going past them. I hope that makes sense. Um, sometimes it will be easier to just use this manual offset control. So with this, you've got this point control. You could just put that point onto any particle and then you would add a keyframe and then you would go forward a second or so and then try to find that same particle. And you would just keep matching the position of the warp using this control, match it with the particles and that'll just move the warp with the particles. So that's another way of doing it. Sometimes that's a lot easier. All right, I'm gonna animate a title animation with a wisp from scratch, similar to the one that you saw at the beginning of the promo video uh, with the Creation Effects logo. And uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do every little thing. I'm actually gonna try and do it as quickly as I can, and I may even speed up some parts, but uh, it should give you some direction on how to make one of these simple animations. I'm going to use this bokeh pre-comp wisp here, so I'll open that up. And you can see I've got four different wisp layers here, which we don't need to see, so I'll hide those, and I'll unhide the target layer. And uh, I'm going to delete this motion path that I already have. And let's add some text. And I'll enable 3D for the text. And I'll add my camera layer. You don't have to have a camera layer, but I might want to add some camera motion later on. Okay, I'm going to go to the first frame and then put my target where I want it to start. So I'm going to have it start on the left side, close to the camera, and it's going to go and circle around the text and then exit off frame way in the back on the right side. So I'm going to add my first keyframe and I usually like to add my first and my ending keyframe and uh, and then later on I, I'll fill in the gaps. So I'll go about four seconds in and I'll position this way in the back. Okay, I'm going to look at it from top view. Zoom out. So you can see my camera is here and the title is here and the target goes from up front on the left all the way to the back. I can add some vertices to this motion path using the pen tool. I'll just add a few. It doesn't really matter where you click as long as you smooth out the, the motion later, which I'll, I'll show you how to do. And then with my selection tool, I'll just drag these in place. 
whenever you're making a 3D motion path, you want to look at it from different angles. So I'm going to switch to right view. So right now, the target is going to be moving at different speeds as it moves along the, the motion path. So I'm going to select all of these keyframes and then right click them and choose Rove Across Time. And that'll make the speed constant. And uh, I'm going to go a step further and go into the graph editor. And uh, I'm going to bring these two, the first keyframe and the last keyframe, I'll bring them down all the way to zero. So right now it's going to ease into its motion and then it'll be fastest right here in the middle. And then it'll slow down to a halt at the end. Understanding how the graph editor works and how to edit these curves is really important to create a uh, quality animation. So I definitely recommend, um, if you're not familiar with it, learn and look up some tutorials because it's really, really cool. All right, that's fine, except that it looks like everything is behind our 3D title. And that's one major limitation of this effect is that when you got a bunch of layers here and they're 2D, they're always going to look like they're behind whatever layer is, is above it. But there is a workaround for this. Uh, what we can do is duplicate the wisp and put one copy above our 3D layer or our title and have one copy below it. And then we would just have sections of each copy showing at certain times. So I'll just select all of my wisp layers and I'll duplicate them, Control or Command D, and I'll move one copy above our title. So this section will be in front of the title, this section will be behind it, this will be in front, and then the rest will be behind. So what we need to do is go to an area of transition, which would be right here. I'll hide all of the wisp layers and unhide the target. So right here. We need to animate this one to go from on to off, and then this one to go from off to on. So we can't do that with the opacity, um, just because that would hide the entire layer. But we can do it with this uh, birth rate property. So that's inside particle appearance controls. We can just add a keyframe for the birth rate, go forward one frame, and then add another keyframe with the birth rate at zero. I'll hit the U key so you can see Here's our keyframes, and uh, we just got to do that for the rest of these layers. So we animated this wisp to turn off at this point, and then we got to do the opposite with this one. We'll turn it on. So we will set it to zero, add a keyframe, go forward one frame, and then restore whatever birth rate property it had before and do that with the other layers. Okay, now we can move to the next area where we transition. And what we can do is just copy our previous keyframes and paste them, and then reverse the order of those keyframes. And I think we got to do that one more time. Um, this time we can just copy these first keyframes and paste them just as they are. Okay, if you watch this birth rate value, you can see it starts out with a value of 15, then it goes to zero for a while, then it goes back to 15, and then goes to zero. If we unhide just the top wisp, you can see the sections that are in front of the title. And if we unhide the bottom wisp, we can see the sections that are behind. And the only thing I might add to this is a little bit of camera movement. So I'll go to my first frame and I'll reveal the position property and I'll just add a keyframe. And I'll go forward about five seconds and just move this camera forward a few hundred pixels. And notice how seamless it is where the different sections of the wisp meet. And that's because as long as you don't change the random seed values on the duplicate wisp, it will be the exact same wisp. And they'll just blend together perfectly. So let's have a look. So there it is in a nutshell. I, you can probably make it look a lot better than that. You just put a little more time into it. But hopefully that helps you understand the technique of, of moving a wisp around a 3D object. 
And there is just one last thing that I want to show you, and that's how to uh, slow down a wisp to a halt. Um, because if you were to keep playing this until after the, the target layer stops moving, um, you can see everything keeps getting wider and wider and here where the target is, is just staying there. Um, you've got particles still exploding outward. Um, so that can look kind of weird, particularly with this growing vine wisp. If I play that back, uh, I don't think anyone's going to want it to, to do that. It just keeps growing and growing and getting thick. Um, doesn't look very good. And this, uh, this reminds me of something else I should have said. Uh, these wisps, when they cross over each other like this, uh, many of them are just going to look like they're just melding into one shape. And it won't look 3D like one is crossing over the other. So uh, to get that look, you would just do that same technique that I showed you. You would just have two layers so that you can have one on top of the other and animate that birth rate uh, when necessary. Um, so this vine is just going crazy here because the, uh, the wisp isn't moving, but all of these elements are just going to keep growing. And there's no control that you can use to slow that down. Um, so what I did, if, if I open up this, the pre comps folder and go to that growing vine folder, you can see there's one comp here. Uh, that's this one with all of the, these wisp elements in here, these solid layer wisps. And then this comp is placed inside another comp. You can see it's named with slowdown. And, uh, if I reveal the keyframes on that layer by pushing the U key, um, you can see that this layer has a time remap effect on it and that makes the vine let me play it back so you can see with the time remap um, this vine slowly comes to a halt and then it just stops growing so if your target layer stops and you want the wisp to stop as well you could just take your wisp comp and put it into a new comp by dragging it to this icon here and you can add a time remap effect by selecting the layer, going to layer, and then time, and enable time remapping. That'll add two keyframes here. The first keyframe has a value of zero. The second keyframe has a value of whatever the time is for that the end of the comp. And um, what you can do is go to where you want your wisp to stop growing. Usually that would be at the moment that your target layer stops moving and add a keyframe and uh, then you can delete this last keyframe because it's not going to move after that. Um, you might want to move this a little to the right and then you can right click it and choose uh, go to keyframe assistant and then easy ease in. Or another way to do it is to go to the, the graph editor and uh, just make sure this last keyframe is all the way at the bottom so that when the keyframe is down here, that means that the time is staying still. It's at zero. So, and you can adjust how much it eases into that keyframe by adjusting this handle right here. So that should do it. I'm gonna send you on your merry way now and you can make wisps all day long, every day. I hope you like the effect and there's a lot more where that came from. So check out creationeffects.com. There are custom 3D books, auroras, uh, there's custom flocks of birds and insects and fish, VHS effects, old film effects, glitch effects, text effects, and much more. So please check it out. Thanks for watching.